good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm going to talk about, not about my PhD, this is a novel uh, research that we are starting in our um, lab. Uh, so the first question that you might have right now is, uh, what's an, uh, an aerogel? So basically aerogels are uh, solid porous structures that are obtained by supercritical CO2 drying of uh, the liquid present in, in a gel, um, maintaining the, the, the matrix and the porous structure. And how can we uh, produce these aerogels? So basically you start with a solution, um, you perform the so-called sol gel process and then you end up with a gel, an hydrogel. In this case, we need to change the solvent, the water that it's filled inside the porous by ethanol. You have an alcohol gel and then you uh, dry the ethanol with supercritical CO2 in order to obtain the final uh, aerogel. Um, for those who do not know, uh, supercritical CO2 is carbon dioxide in its uh, fluid state above a certain temperature and pressure, and it has properties. Um, these biomaterials have bioactive properties. And for instance, alginate and chitosan uh, have been uh, in the last years um, applied as biomaterials for wound healing. We have um, here a classic uh, wound healing process after, uh, um, after the, uh, some injury takes place in the skin. We have the um, homeostasis with the coagulation taking place. Then you have the inflammation, the proliferation of fibroblasts and the formation of the scar, and then the remodeling of the uh, matrix. And so alginate and chitosan can actually improve this um, healing process because they have these bioactive properties presented in the slide. Uh, both of them have hemostatic properties. Alginate can provide um, a good physiological moist environment to the wound. And chitosan has actually antimicrobial activity and can uh, stimulate the fibroblast proliferation. Uh, so having this um, in mind, what we wanted to do is, was to produce fibers, uh, aerogel fibers, to be finally applied um, as wound healing uh, mat materials. So we, this is our uh, process of producing the fibers. We start with a solution of alginate. Uh, we emulsify this aqueous solution uh, with paraffin oil, and then to this emulsion, we had uh, chitosan with acetic acid in order to, um, well, chitosan will act as the cross-linking agent and will uh, provide the positive charges to the gelation of alginate and will end up with a, a network of hydrogel, and then we do the solvent exchange and so on to get these uh, nice structures in the end. Um, well, the, the fibers can be bioactive by themselves, but we, can, we wanted to, to check if we can also impregnate some antimicrobial drugs, so we decided to do some experiments with impregnation with menthol, and we perform all the characterization of the fibers. And this is the look of our fibers, and if we see the same picture, we can actually have, we have um, a lot of porous and the specific surface area is quite good. Um, we wanted to see if actually these fibers were um, potentially applied for wound dealing. So first we um, checked the cytotoxicity with using uh, fibroblasts. So in the concentrate, uh, concentrations tested, non-cytotoxic effect was uh, observed. And we then did the, a simple uh, assay, which is the scratch assay. Then there is, uh, we have a monolayer of fibroblasts. We simulate a wound by simply scratch with a micro pipette, pipette tip. And then we add, or don't add, uh, the, the fibers 
And as you can see, the, after 18 hours with the fibers, it's really difficult to see the, the scratch. And in the case of the control where we, when we don't have the, the fibers, the um, scratch continues there. And actually, the, the cells are quite stressed. And, and also, we performed um, some antibacterial assay. We used um, uh, an, an antimicrobial test again against the uh, grand positive Staphylococcus aureus. And um, compared with the control, we actually get got a, a reduction of the um, of this bacteria. So then we loaded the, these fibers with menthol. We used also in this case supercritical CO2 uh, for the impregnation. So it's a very simple process. You have um, a thermostatic high pressure cell where when where you placed the fibers and the mantle, you pressurize the system with supercritical CO2, the mantle will be solubilized in the CO2 and will diffuse into the fibers. And so the system were equilibrating during three hours. And after that, we got um, a load of 90% weight total, which is above of 50 of encapsulation e efficiency. And of course that we have porous structures and we have a volatile compound. So we wanted to see if, um, if somehow the, the mental just escaped from the matrix. So we um, again quantified the mental after 40 days and we got uh, a, slightly, a slightly decrease of the drug. Uh, finally, we wanted to check the state of the drug. So we perform differential scanning calamity analysis and the melting uh, temperature of the metal uh, disappear in the loaded fibers. So we assume that the metal is in its amorphous state. And we also did FTU uh, where we saw that the signature bands of metal are presented in the loaded uh, fibers. So we think that we have a physical interaction between the compounds. Um, so to conclude, we were able to produce these uh, quite uh, nice structures, very porous. They were non-cytotoxic. We could actually increase the cell migration. They were antimicrobial by themselves. And um, we were able to load uh, a drug, and we can load other drugs if necessary. And well. I want to acknowledge all of my um, colleagues, not only in Portugal, but also in Hamburg that collaborated to, so, that collaborated to this work. <laughs> and of course, all the funding, especially from FCT. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you have any questions? I don't know what happened because the slides just. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and thank you all for your attention. <laughs> okay, do you have any questions, Paul? No. All right, so let's thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget your certificate. Okay.